Well, there have been few more passionate debates in resource economics than around peak oil. Whether it has or hasn't happened, and indeed whether peak oil is about resources left or production levels. One man who has strong views on this and on how peak oil will, will mean the end of growth as we know it is Richard Heinberg, Senior Fellow in Residence uh, at, uh, at the uh, Post Carbon Institute in California. And he joins me now. Richard, welcome to the programme. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, where do you sit, first of all, on the timing of peak oil? Uh, well, we've seen oil production at a plateau since 2005, and what's happening is we're replacing regular conventional oil, which made economic growth happen during the 20th century, with uh, harder to produce, more expensive to produce, and more environmentally risky tar sands, uh, uh, oil shale and ultra deep water oil yeah. so you know what's the, the problem is that these things are slow to come online and meanwhile regular conventional oil is declining because you say you say we're sort of plateaued uh, that on the other side of the argument people would say look in 2004 Boone Pickens predicted that never again will we pump more than 82 million barrels of liquid fuels and today according to the uh, FT uh, we, were, we were pumping about 91 million barrels so right. there are people who argue that it's still going up. Right. Well, that, that definition, though, is, is a little wobbly because uh, that 92 million barrels includes uh, biofuels, uh, natural gas liquids, and all sorts of things that aren't really conventional oil. And often, as you say, more difficult and more expensive to extract. Right. So when uh, we have Mitt Romney recently saying that uh, he's going to make America independent by 2020 because of all this shale oil that's been discovered, um, you, you don't see that as no. just continuing on with, um, with, with accessing more proven reserves? No, it's not going to happen. Uh, the, uh, the, the tight oil that's coming from North Dakota is uh, is in smaller reservoirs and and wells deplete very rapidly sometimes as much as sixty percent in the first year so if uh, if you drill a well in January by December production may be down sixty percent from its initial level so that means you have to drill and drill and drill more all the time no, so, no, presumably it all depends on the on the oil price and if the oil price is going up as it has been doing uh, the these less viable projects start becoming viable uh, and on we go right but there's a limit to how many wells you can drill in in a year and and they're going after the sweet spots first so as time goes on, the, the, the quality of the resource uh, declines, and also the energy return on the energy invested declines. It takes energy to explore for, drill, pump oil. Mm. And the, if you compare the amount of energy that we get back at the end of the day with these unconventional resources compared to the amount that has to be invested, it's, it's pretty paltry, especially if you compare it to the, the glory days of conventional oil back in the in the 20th century. Okay, so we talk, talked about the recent rise in oil prices. We know all about the dramas in the, in the Middle East at the moment. On the other hand, you've got people worried that uh, uh, demand, uh, economic demand, uh, will not be, be there, notwithstanding uh, QE3. Uh, right. But you actually ha have um, quite an interesting theory on how, how oil and, uh, and peak oil could be linked to the end of growth. Right. Well, we're at a situation now where the oil industry needs a price above $100 a barrel in order to justify looking for that new incremental barrel's worth of production. But we've seen from, from recent history that when the price of oil goes up above $100 a barrel and stays there for very long, that tends to undercut economic growth. So one way or another, we're in a situation where oil just isn't able to provide the, the economic bang that that it used to yes you, you say that the uh, the economy tends to hate high oil prices that's right because it, presumably it, it drives the economy into sort of more volatile state well uh, it, it oil is implicated in just about every aspect of, of our economy whether it's agriculture transportation and uh, and so as oil prices go up food prices go up and across the board it makes makes everything uh, more costly. So, so it drives recessions. And it drives recessions. We've seen it again and again. In, in the U.S., uh, every oil price spike since 1973 has, has correlated with a recession. Uh, 
again, on the other side of the debate, I see recently Iran's OPEC governor, uh, uh, Mohammed Khatabi, saying uh, that the US and the European governments should focus on solving their structural problems, and in particular their, their budget deficits, rather than blaming rising oil prices. Well, you know, we're, we're facing the convergence of two crises. First, the, the problem with uh, oil that we've been talking about, but at the same time, we're also at a situation of peak debt. And not just government debt. Uh, for the last 30, 40 years, uh, countries have been trying to stimulate economic growth with more consumer debt. So uh, private debt has risen at about three times the rate of GDP. You can't do that forever. We, at a certain point, we reach this uh, situation where we can't make the interest payments on the existing debt and... and Except we just print more money. So it just... I mean, I've been, yeah. I've been doing this show for months and months and months, <laughs> and everybody says it's coming, it's coming, but, but we just keep printing more money. Right, right. But the, 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 the medicine loses its effect after a while, and I think we're seeing that right now with the, with the, the latest round of, of quantitative easing. It, uh, it stimulates for, for a shorter and shorter time each time so, they resort to it. So your book, The End of Growth, adapting to our new economic reality, briefly, how do we adapt? Well, you know, I think we're going to have to uh, create an a, economy that doesn't require growth. Uh, the economy wasn't growing prior to the Industrial Revolution, and with uh, coal and, and oil and lots of inventions, we made economic growth happen for, for a number of decades, but it's not a normal and natural thing. We live on a finite planet. And we're going to have to create an, a, a kind of economy that's a steady state economy that exists within the bounds of Earth's limits. And on that radical note, for many of our audience, I shall leave it there. Richard Heinberg, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.